Call it nightmare on Wall Street. Stocks all around the world are tanking. The stock market plunged 778 points. We're in the midst of a serious financial crisis. When the financial crisis hit in 2008, people were losing their homes, businesses that had been around for years suddenly ceased to exist. Overnight, trillions of dollars in wealth were gone. Every kind of luxury that was not a necessity for life went way down. A lot of the money that was going into the strip clubs is disappearing. After the financial collapse, things are so different. The same clients never came back. So these girls decided they had to find a different way to bring in the big bucks. You weren't getting paid to sit and talk anymore to hang out. Girls were doing dirty things. There were things that happened with champagne bottles that you can't sit in network television. And it's like, oh my gosh, I'm not gonna do that. So Rosie's in the club and she doesn't wanna work as a prostitute. She wants to find something else to do. Rosie is this enterprising hustler, and the world is amid all of these major changes, so she teams up with Samantha Barbash. She was a single mom from the Bronx. She was ambitious. Samantha Barbash was like the queen bee of the strip club scene. She had connections with the hosts and the customers. She was a veteran, and she was somebody you wanted to have on your side. Rosie sees Samantha coming into the club. Samantha has her Louboutins. Samantha looks great. And Samantha is not dancing. She's doing marketing. It's under the umbrella of marketing and promotion that the scam really starts taking shape. The strippers don't call it marketing. They call it fishing, as in casting a line. See who we can catch, reel them in, get them in at the club. The hustle starts from a very legal thing that happens every night in New York City. Men are out in the town. They meet an attractive woman at a bar. They're having a fun time. She suggests, hey, let's go to a strip club. That would be fun. And Samantha goes out and recruits Rosie and Karina to help her. Karina Pascucci worked in these clubs as a waitress, not as a dancer. She describes herself as young and impressionable. I think my role in the group, I think I was bait. I was just new and green. So normally you would go to like a happy hour. I was dressed in a blazer. I was pretending that I also came out of work and had a rough day. People were like, what kind of work are you in? I'm like, I'm in marketing. <laughs> These women are in sales and they know their targets. They can differentiate between a $100 watch and a $40,000 watch. We're looking for Hublots, Rolexes, the Tech Philippe. I mean, we went all over the city. Lounges, bars, even restaurants, steakhouses. If you saw a black American Express, you knew you had a high roller. You're like, oh, we have a shark. A shark is a serious high roller that these girls were able to reel in and we would bring clients back to the club. For every dollar they spend, they get a percentage of that money. And your goal is just to get them to spend as much as possible. So literally, we're talking that meter is running the second you walk in, and it's running fast, and it's running high. That customer walks in, pays a cover charge, pays exorbitant money for food and drink, will pay a woman to get a lap dance, and you could be paying several thousands of dollars per hour just for the service charges, for having the strippers, the dancers, or the masseuses come in and spend time in the room. So it's at this point that everything starts to cross the line and go from legal to basically illegal because they're charging things on these men's credit cards that never happened. Sometimes the charges on these credit cards were so big that the banks would call and confirm that the charges were legit and the women would pick up the phone pretending to be the assistants so that the charges could be confirmed and ultimately went through. The hustle became something that was no longer legit. I would be on the phone with a credit card company and I would say, oh, we are trying to put a $10,000 charge through. It got declined. Can you tell me what's going on? Taking somebody's credit card and running up their American Express for $100,000 is a crime. I didn't think what I was doing was wrong. 
Now, looking back, it's crazy. The scam takes an even darker turn. That involves prostitution. The customers were expecting to be satisfied. So all of a sudden now these men insisted on sex. Why did sex help them in a scam? Because sex helps in every scam. The men are led to believe that they're paying all this money because they are actually going to be able to engage in sex acts. So Samantha and I were like, OK, we need to find girls. We did call girls from Backpage and Craigslist. I guess it's a form of outsourcing. I saw the connection, I saw the opportunity, and little by little, you find yourself doing things that sound crazy. Somewhere along the line, they came up with a bright idea to drug them. They just give them, as they said, just a sprinkle of MDMA and ketamine. It's not a day drug like a roofie, because that it totally uh, incapacitates you. This is something that'll put you into a euphoric state so you'll be more complacent. You're agreeable to just about anything. The women would whip out that credit card and start charging. Five bottles of the best and most expensive champagne. Another five bottles of the most expensive scotch. Get him a lap dance. Let's do a second hour in the champagne room. And he is under the influence of this drug cocktail. They ran this con like a business. I would like to think Samantha was the CEO and I was the CFO. They were a criminal enterprise. You want more and more and more. You can't get enough money. And that's when you start making mistakes. All of a sudden, you just lose control of the situation. You're like, oh my god, what just happened? What did I do?